Hey everyone, and welcome back to Build UX. In this how-to, we're going to check out variants in Figma and see how they can be used to better organize your components and make swapping between instances a lot easier. Here in Figma, we have some existing button components. We have a few different themes, as well as hover and focus styles for each theme. And these are made using standard components in Figma. If you'd like to see how I created these buttons, I have a dedicated how-to on auto layout where we cover building up these components from scratch. One thing to note about standard components is to achieve inheritance, we typically have to recomponentize existing components, which creates this nesting in the layers you see here. And as we have more complexity, so for instance, this blue or cobalt theme and the focus style, you'll see that the nesting can go several layers deep. And this is one of the things that variants will greatly simplify for us. Now with these existing buttons, let's go ahead into our assets panel and drag in an instance. So let's grab this base default. And the first thing I want to explore is recent improvements to the instance swapping menu. So with this button instance here, you see here on the right, we have the default state for our base button, but we can easily traverse up and down different variations of this component as needed. So for instance, we can grab our cobalt and focus state, and that can be much quicker than traversing the assets panel if you have a lot of components going on. Some other nice improvements to the instance panel is if we make a slight change, for example, let's swap out this text color. If we select the component and go into this options menu, we can reset all overrides or push these overrides to the main component. We can also detach our instance from here. One other great thing is you can go to the main component that this is based off of. So if we click this, it'll focus the main component even if it's in different pages or a separate location of the file, and make any changes that we want here. Once we're done, we can return to the instance and continue working on whatever mockup we're creating. So those are all super handy improvements to existing components, but let's dive into how variants work now. Now, the first thing to do with variants is you don't want any layers or grouping between your different instances of the component. So with this outermost layer selected, I'm gonna use Control or Command plus Shift and G to ungroup. Now that we have these nested groups selected, I'm going to do the same. Control or Command plus Shift and G. And we have all of our buttons selected with nothing in between them. And on the right, you'll see we have this new variance feature that allows us to combine as variants. So let's go ahead and select that. With that selected, we've generated two different properties, and these properties have different values you can choose. This first one, property one, let's rename this to be theme. And property two, let's say this is state. Nice thing is you can actually drag and drop to rearrange these if needed. I want theme to come first and state to come last, so I'll leave this order. And what's really cool is if you open up this single button component, you'll see that all of these variants are now nested inside. And if we go to our assets panel, we only have one button option that we can drag into place. So this makes finding your components much easier. And then once you drag in an instance, we can choose between all these variants with ease. And those same improvements for resetting overrides, detaching the instance, or going to the main component are all still present with the variants panel. So this is already a huge improvement. We can quickly toggle between the different variants that we want to see. What I'd like to do is build out additional variants of this button at a more of a design system scale. So let's create some new buttons. I'd like to create a small version and inside of each of these buttons, if we open up the layers, we also have some icons that we can toggle. So maybe variations with leading or trailing icons. Because these were based on existing components, we still have that nesting going on where we have button nested inside of our focus variation or in our cobalt theme, we have to drill down into another nested instance and you can see our layers aren't that clean. A cool thing with variants is we can avoid all of this nesting, which makes creating the buttons much faster, but also much nicer if you need to drill into the layers to make a modification. In our case, we're actually going to start with just our base default button and work from there. All right, so I've backed things up from where we started. And the first thing I'm going to do is again ungroup these layers. I'm going to get rid of everything but the base default style. And we're gonna start with this. So with just a raw component, you'll notice that you can also add variants at this point as well. 
So if we add a new variant, it already detected that we have base and default as our properties. And this is looking good. And it wants you to create a variation because you've added a new variant. So in this case, our property two is going to be hover. And if we select that main component, again, we can customize the naming here. So we have theme and we also have state. And we need to make our change to this first variant. So going to the actual button, let's lighten this background for the hover state. The cool thing now is we can duplicate this however we want. So we don't have to worry about where the inheritance is coming from anymore. Previously with components, you had to be careful which component you based an instance off of because the inheritance would cascade in a certain direction. Here we can copy as needed and everything is interchangeable without any worry. So as we create a new instance, you'll see that the properties and values of this variant are conflicting. That's because we haven't made any modifications to the properties or variants of this. So in this case, we actually want to change this to focus. And now that error message goes away. With our focus styles, let's add a stroke. Let's say our darkest charcoal color here. And that would be our focus styles. So now you can see that there's no nesting with variants of this component. They all appear to be the exact same layer structure. So that's looking great. Let's create another variant that's a small button. So for this, we'll need another property. And if we go to our variants panel, let's add a new property. And this will be size. Right now, everything is a default size. So we want to select this last button we created here. And this will have the small size. One thing, going back up to the main button, I want state to always come last, so I'm going to drag this size property up. And now we can make our changes. So I'm going to go to our actual button itself. Let's change the horizontal padding to 16, vertical padding to 8. That's looking good. We'll need to go into our text and change this to our body small type spec. And then let's just do a preview of our focus style real quick. So if we engage this focus ring, it looks like eight pixels of padding is too much. Let's bring this down to six in each dimension, just to tighten up this smaller variation. And then the last thing is we need to adjust our frame, because here we're actually clipping our focus ring with a frame for these specific buttons. With that adjusted, everything's looking good. And now let's make sure our spacing looks good in our file as well. All right, for this first default style, we don't need to see our focus ring just yet, but it's ready to go. And we can simply duplicate from here. And variant frames act like normal frames, so we manually drag this out to get the arrangement we're looking for. All right, this next one is going to be our hover state. And the changes will get quicker as we get more familiar here. Give ourselves some more room to work with. This is our focus state. So we're going to turn on that focus indicator. That's looking good. You can see how fast it is now to create variations as needed. And with our size variation completed, let's create a variation where we have that icon at the beginning of the button. So in this case, we need to go up to our top level component. Let's add a new property. This will say icon. By default, it'll be set to false. And on this first variation, let's set the icon to be leading. We'll go into our layers, turn on that beginning icon. Let's make sure our frame is adjusted as needed. That's looking good. So if you look at our layers, you can now see that we have icon equals false or leading. So anytime you use true or false in your variant names, you'll get this syntax instead. And you can just simply leave it true or false and have more of a boolean or a toggle approach. In our case, we want it off by default, and then we'll have a couple options if you do want an icon. So just a slightly different naming pattern here. That's looking good, and from here, the process would be identical. So our hover state here, 
and we would simply need to change that fill. And let's continue on with different icon variations, the themes, and creating a size for each. I'll go ahead and take care of that. Whew, all right, so about 200 buttons later, let's see all of these. We now have something more at the scale of an actual design system. And all of these were quick to create, where we simply duplicate, update the properties, and adjust the layers as needed. So you can see we have our leading and trailing icons in both default and small sizes. And this carries through every color theme that we have in our particular design system example. Now if we go into our assets panel again, and let's drag out an instance of this component, it cleans up your assets panel so much, and this is a great feature. Now you can see that we can quickly toggle between all the different variants that we want. So maybe the theme is charcoal, the size is small, we have a trailing icon, and the state is focus state. Look at how fast that is to get all of those established. And if we ever need to do any work on this component, we can simply detach the instance or go to the main component and make our updates here. So all of those same improvements to normal instance swapping have carried over to variants as well. So that's it for this how-to. As you can see, variants is a really intuitive but super handy and powerful feature. And it can definitely simplify your component structure and make consuming a design system so much nicer. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to keep a lookout for future how-tos and other videos.